It's across the hall. I don't anticipate any such trouble tonight. It'll be the exact opposite, as a matter of fact. Let's get rolling, folks. Can we welcome to the stage the Acadia Axman basketball team of 1976-77? So, Ted, the four over here, okay? <clears throat> and, ladies and gentlemen, the team has made a unanimous decision tonight to leave the chair vacant in honor of their late coach, Mr. Dick Hunt. So, he is first and foremost in their minds tonight. So, tonight we welcome the fourth Acadia University men's basketball team to the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame. The 1930 Axeman, inducted in 1981, won the Provincial, Maritime, and Eastern Canadian titles before losing 60-40 to 40 in a two-game total point national final against New, Mest New Westminster, B.C. The 1971 Axeman, inducted in 1980, won 30 of 32 games and finished the season with a home court CIS tournament-winning victory over the University of Manitoba. The 1965 Acadia squad, inducted in 1982, had a tough road, relying on mostly seasoned veterans but a short bench Battling injuries all season, the eight-man squad eventually beat St. Evex in overtime for the Maritime University title. In the CIS tournament at the St. Pat's High School gym in Halifax, Acadia beat Carleton, then went on to overtime again to top the Windsor Lancers. Now, it's time for another Acadia national champion basketball team to enter the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame. The 1976-77 Axeman, coached by Dick Hunt, seemed to coast through the regular season, winning 25 of 30 games, including 16 straight among a streak of 23 wins and 24 starts. So how easy was it? Well, this was one of the first Nova Scotia University basketball teams playing under a new CIA rule limiting each team to three foreign-trained players. And this rule was instituted primarily because non-Atlantic schools were upset that American-laden teams in this region were winning too regularly. And the new rule was probably a blessing in disguise. It gave Acadia, the Atlantic representative at Nationals in 1977, a chance to proudly show off its homegrown talent. Basically, they told the Ontarians and the Western Canadians that it mattered not who was on the court, they could compete. The Axemen, with AUS Coach of the Year Dick Hunt at the helm, competed. With three Americans up front and a starting backcourt of two Nova Scotia high school grads and a bench loaded with five solid Nova Scotians and one Ontarian, Acadia thrilled the 5,000 fans who packed the Halifax Forum on three March evenings with their championship performance. Ed Shannon of Worcester, Massachusetts, a tough inside player who became one of the most popular players in Acadia history, was AUS MVP and most outstanding player at the Nationals. Alvin Jessamy of Yonkers, New York, averaged 20 points a game, led the country in offensive rebounding, and was named first team All-Canadian. Doug Roberts of Rumford, Maine, was a front court starter who averaged 14 points per game. But ask any Acadia fan at that time, or even those today who remember this team, and you'll hear it was the backcourt leaders, Robbie Upshaw of Lower Sackville and Gordy West of Liverpool, who were instrumental in that championship performance. People will also tell you that it was freshman Ted Upshaw of Windsor, who would be an All-Canadian by his senior year, and players off the bench like Tony Aker of Kenville, Al Oliver of Milton, Eric Skinner of Amherst, Bruce Hunt of Wolfville, Steve Johnson of Yarmouth, along with Mississauga native Bruce Toygo, who made the difference on this team. Now, if we can ask Tony Aker to come forward. So, Tony, it, uh, it sounded easy. A bunch of wins in a short amount of time. Was it easy? Uh, anyone who's ever played a sport knows that there aren't any easy games in the season. Uh, uh, Coach Hunt had us mentally and physically prepared for every game, and I like to believe that this is the toughest conference in the country to get out of. So that in itself was a uh, preparation for anything we come across that year. Beautiful. Thank you, Tony. We'll bring guys up one by one here. Isn't he good? Yeah. Do you want to take over here, Tony? You sounded superb there. Uh, under Coach Dick Hunt's guidance, the Axemen played a tough regular season schedule that included non-conference games against university teams from New England. They won 16 in a row, but not all were blowouts when they walked into Acadia's War Memorial Gym for the AUS tournament before a very partisan home crowd. The Axemen were expected to coast to the league title. Game one against St. of X was an easy 86-49 win. But the championship final against UPEI was far from easy. Midway through the second half, an inspired Panther team 
held a 56 to 44 lead, but the Axemen came back to tie it at 66. It was back and forth and off to overtime they went. Two free throws by West late in overtime sealed the deal, and Gordy is here. Come on down, Gordy. Nice. So it's overtime, season on the line, you're on the line. Can you recall the, the pressure and the nerves? Well, certainly the uh, team members are looking at you and they're talking to you, trying to give you words of, of uh, encouragement. And all that's on your mind is, can I get the rhythm down? Can I make these shots? Can I win this game or help win this game for the team? And luckily those shots went in. And, and how do you calm your heart in a circumstance like that? I think I got to go back to my high school days on that. Uh, my coach back in high school, Owen Hamlin, uh, did a lot of work with me at the, at the foul line, knowing that I'd be a guard and might have the ball late in the games. And uh, because of that, might get some late fouls. And he worked a lot uh, with me by uh, getting the rebounds and throwing them at your feet. So you'd have to throw your rhythm off and, and pick it up and shoot again or, or roll it on the floor or, or bouncing off your knees. And a lot of those things, I think, helped uh, uh, calm things that uh, you were there for one, one mission, to make the shot, to get the disturbances and, the, and all others. Well, good stuff. You made the two when it counted. Way to go. Gordy West, folks. So at the CIS Championship, Acadia drew UPEI a wild card choice in the opening round. Less tension this time, 88-70 Acadia. In the semifinal, Waterloo gave Acadia all they could handle. Game tied, 62. 25 seconds left. Ted Upshaw grabs a defensive rebound. After a timeout, West gets possession, runs the clock down to five seconds before passing to Shannon for a short fadeaway jumper at the buzzer. Nothing but net. Axman win. Ted Upshaw was a rookie, and he was on the floor in the heats. Where is he? There he is. Right here. So you... <laughs> You're still just a little guy. Um, do you remember, you must have had, I mean, here, here's a kid from Windsor. One year you're playing high school in Windsor. Next year you're on the floor for a national title. How did you calm the nerves? Well, I'm not sure I did that, Bruce, but uh, all, all I could remember was, I got the ball. Now what do I do with it? Where's, where's Gordy? <laughs> <laughs> because if I didn't get it to Gordy or Robbie, I knew that Coach Hunt was going to work us hard the next day. So really, that's how I calmed my nerves, looking for Gordy and Robbie in the backcourt. Would it have been a really bad scene had you decided to dribble it yourself? Oh, she would have been ugly.